eBay spinoff PayPal, the problem with iMessage spam, and SoundCloud launches ads for the first time. What's going on there? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 156 for Thursday, August 21st, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all your financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. The information is reporting that eBay may spin off PayPal as early as next year. And then news had eBay stock up nearly 4% earlier today. Now, sources say that eBay is telling potential candidates for the position of PayPal CEO, which has been open since June, about the potential PayPal spinoff, which is interesting since eBay CEO John Donahoe has said in the past that PayPal was integral to eBay's business and that a split would not make sense. All right, here's a troubling statistic. Security company Cloudmark says that iMessage is now responsible for over 30% of all mobile spam messages sent. The company says it's easy to write a Mac OS script that can then send messages to all types of devices like MacBooks and iPhones and iPads, anything that uses iMessage. If you've added your email address to iMessage, a spammer wouldn't need your phone number. And because the spam is all traveling on Apple's network, a mobile carrier can't really intervene. Now, Apple has done a few things. It's added rate limiting to the iMessage network. Users can also report iMessage spammers and get them banned from Apple's network. It takes an email to the company, a screenshot of the spam, the phone number or email address of the spammer, and the date and time that it was sent. However, Wired notes that it reported one spam address to Apple over a week ago, which was still active on the iMessage network several days later. I haven't gotten even one iMessage spam. No, I need to knock on wood somewhere. We've talked at length on TN2 about the rise of tech company diversity reports. Well, both Pandora and Indiegogo have released their own, and it's certainly notable that at Pandora, women make up almost half of the company's total staff and almost 40% of the company's leaders. Overall, in the tech industry, that number is a lot lower. Women make up only 18% of total employees. Indiegogo reported 33% of its tech employees are also female, which is a much higher percentage than other companies that have recently released diversity reports. For example, Twitter's tech employees are 10% female. Females at Snapchat and Facebook make up 15%, 70% for Google, and then 20% at both Pinterest and eBay. Congratulations, Indiegogo and Pandora. You're more of us. The California Department of Motor Vehicles says that self-driving cars made by Google must have a steering wheel and won't approve Google's cars without a backup control system that allows a driver to immediately take physical control if needed. Google recently built a self-driving car of its own design, which has no human control system other than a go button. But the new law means that Google's self-designed car needs a steering wheel and gas and brake pedals anytime it hits a road in public. The Wall Street Journal reports that Google will comply with the law by building a, quote, small temporary steering wheel and pedal system that drivers can use during testing into the prototype cars. The journal also reports that Google petitioned the DMV to allow it to test automated trucks and motorcycles on public roads as well as cars, but that the DMV declined. Coming up, why the U.S. Copyright Office says that a monkey selfie cannot be copyrighted. And next, I'll talk with Anthony Ha from TechCrunch about why SoundCloud starts playing ads and Instagram begins providing analytics. But first, let's talk about money. I'm no good at managing my money. I need help. Managing my money is a pain. The good news is that there's a free and secure tool called Personal Capital that solves my main two problems. First of all, I've got all these accounts. I'm trying to keep track of everything. I'm logging in. I'm forgetting my password. I have 401ks from old jobs. It's, it's just kind of a mess. Now, I could pay somebody to manage my money for me, but that's not very efficient because if you have a tool like Personal Capital, it brings all of your accounts and assets onto a single screen on your computer on your phone or your tablet with real-time and intuitive graphs. Personal Capital has a, an award-winning watch app. You can download it in the Google Play Store. It integrates with Personal Capital on other Android devices and gives you, as a user, timely updates 
on your finances wherever and whenever you need them. Personal Capital shows you if you're overpaying in fees, how to reduce those fees. You get tailored advice on optimizing your investment. So signing up takes just a minute. Personal Capital gives you total clarity and transparency to make better investment decisions right away. Want to set up your free account? Just go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. That's personalcapital.com slash TN and the number two. And thanks to Personal Capital for their support of Tech News Tonight. Joining us now is Anthony Ha, TechCrunch writer and friend of TN2. Hey, Anthony. Hey, how's it going? Good. Did you like how I consider you a friend? That was, I, I consider you a friend, so this well, is great. Well, that's wonderful. Oh, that's good. I feel like this has been really good for relationship building here. Yeah, I, I wanted to start us off on a really good good note today. Yeah. Uh, before right. we talk about uh, the topics of ads, we mentioned uh, before the break, SoundCloud is now experimenting with ads on its platform and also an ad-free service. Now, SoundCloud differs in, in relation to other music services in the way that there is both copyrighted music that ends up on SoundCloud, but then also non-copyrighted music. So how does this work? Right. Um, I think, you know, I think my sense is that some of the details are still being kind of figured out as, they, as this rolls out or... Maybe they've been figured out and they're just not talking about it too much. But you're right that there's sort of, you know, the licensed content and then there's just sort of the randomly kind of uploaded content. Um, and for now, I think the ads are just going to run on the on the licensed content. So the, you know, the, the sort of more professional content. And then what uh, how does the uh, the the service uh, that will strip the ads out? Is that just some sort of a pro service as a SoundCloud user, I can pay $12 a year, that right, sort of thing. exactly. I, and I think that's still, there aren't a lot of details about that yet, but I think it's, it sounds like in a lot of ways, this, the whole, the way they're going to do this is going to be very similar to sort of what you've seen on Pandora and other, you know, um, online radio stations where, you know, you'll just start to see more and more ads and then you can pay a certain fee and then you won't hear the ads if you don't want to. Now, how does this potentially work with an artist uh, who... Um, you know, is feels that it they should be getting uh, royalties. Um, you know, something's on SoundCloud, and SoundCloud right. is obviously uh, monetarily benefiting, and the and an artist doesn't feel appropriately compensated. You know, they uh, how, how much legal trouble has SoundCloud had so far, and you know, do you expect more? Uh, I think that's that's definitely been an issue for them. I think there's been um, some recent sort of controversies around that idea about, I think specifically around the idea that you could actually use the SoundCloud API and essentially be sort of broadcasting um, music for free. Um, I don't think that there are necessarily, I mean, that's, I think that's the issue that's the, this, with SoundCloud is how, uh, you know, that, that there's so many different people on there. Um, and I think that there's going to be, you know, a lot of issues to kind of work out as this kind of as this rolls out further in terms of how the, you know, when it, when it is and isn't appropriate to, uh, uh, you know, to, to be sharing revenue. And I should say that, I mean, part of the ad program is that they are sort of, I think, going to be sort of introducing this program called on Club, just like a partner program for different artists. So um, presumably that'll give them more opportunity to, you know, to make money from advertising. But Again, you know, it, it's still being rolled out. I'm sure there are going to be a lot of um, issues to be worked out on a case-by-case -case basis. All right. Speaking of ads, Instagram, uh, which is, of course, owned by Facebook, recently released analytics tools for the app. So is this geared f towards me? Is it geared towards a brand who wants to advertise on Instagram? What What do the analytics say? It, it's, it's geared towards a, a brand who wants to advertise on Instagram. I mean, I think... What it means for for you and for me as someone who presumably is not running ads on Instagram, um, it's just that I think that they're getting more serious about it, and we're going to be seeing more ads over time. I think you know, like Instagram, I think started running ads maybe ten months ago, and and it's been you know a fairly slow rollout in terms of okay, they're doing a few campaigns, you know, doing it very caref carefully in terms of figuring out what works and what doesn't, and this is kind of one of those big steps towards, okay, like we figured it out. Now we're really going to start bringing on a lot more advertisers and giving them sort of, you know, a standard set of tools. Do you think a lot of this uh, is going to be eye-opening for an advertiser who says, oh, you know, maybe I have, maybe the, the advertiser gets uh, analytics report and it turns out that a lot of eyeballs scrolled over that photo, right. you know, but didn't actually do any actionable thing because of that. And I know that that was a worry, you know, with Twitter as well. You know, right. if everyone can see that click-through rates are really low, you know, are we all <laughs> going to stop using it? 
I think there's probably a degree of that. I mean, I think the flip side is everyone, you know, expects that from online advertising. And I mean, I certainly for just for me personally, I think once I saw how low the click through rates were on, you know, just regular banner ads that you see on any website, I mean, it's hard. I think that's just sort of a problem sort of on the web in general. But and, and I guess the argument would be, you know, you sort of have to acknowledge the problem first and try to figure out how to create stuff that people will actually click on. In SoundCloud's case, it sounds like uh, offering tiers uh, is the is the right call. There may be some, some revenue split with artists as well. Instagram, owned by Facebook, can't really imagine Instagram ever having a pro service where you don't have ads. But right. is that something that you can see happening down the road? I mean, Facebook is really one of, you know, the only holdouts uh, as far as, you know, large right. networks that, you know, are... are it's is that, is that kind of inevitable? I guess is my question. I I mean, if I were to bet, I mean, and this is you know, I don't know, but if I were to bet, I think that Facebook and Instagram are are going to continue to be the holdouts there because I think you know these are services which is, it's just all about how many people they reach, mm -hmm. and I think that you know when you get to a certain scale, you know, you can that that it just makes sense to just be free and to make money from advertising. I think that. Um, I think that the money that they would get from a pro service um, is probably pretty trivial compared to the money that they think they can make from advertising. Now, of course, if, you know, they at some point hit a ceiling with the, with those ads, um, and then maybe that'll be a different conversation. But I think certainly in the near future, I think they, they see ads as really the, you know, the future of, of that is just going to, that's where all their money is going to come from. Anthony Ha is a writer over at TechCrunch. Thanks so much for being back on TN2 and let folks know where they can keep up with you. They can uh, see more of my writing at techcrunch.com. They can follow me on Twitter at Anthony Ha. Thank you, Anthony. Thanks for having me. All right, finally, a selfie photo that was taken by a monkey of itself after swiping a photographer's camera that you might have seen making the internet rounds has been deemed by the United States copyright regulators not copyrightable by the photographer and that a, quote, photograph taken by a monkey is unprotected intellectual property. It was actually in a report. The report comes two weeks after Wikimedia, which is the US-based operation that runs Wikipedia, announced that the public, and not the photojournalist whose name is David Slater, maintains the rights to the selfie and the other pictures that the monkey took. Now, under UK federal law, Slater is from the UK, he could claim that the intellectual property rights to the picture if the image is part of his, what's known as, quote, intellectual creation, however, the Telegraph notes that such a case has never been tried in court. That is just weird. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News Today tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.